Okay, looks like I can make... Mm -hmm. F5 would just open up my king side too much. But let's go with that. And you know what? I taught you already a couple of times. In rook end games, everything uh, depends on activity. So I'll go with this rook d8. I'll try to put both of my rooks down. And I don't care about the pawns. I just care about the activity. Let's go. I'm threatening check. I want to go there. I want to take on g2. Now I'll take one pawn. Now I take another pawn. And this guy wants to force me. But you know what? On this one, I'll play here. I'll play here. Actually, wait a sec. I'll go here. If he goes rook b1, I'll play rook b2. And whatever he does, it should be drawn. Uh, at least I showed you a very important principle in the end games. He wants to go rook b1 there, right? But wait a sec, I'll go here. Whatever he does, I play rook on his rook. Okay, so I'm threatening his pawn. If he plays rook b1, rook b6, exactly. And now we should just go with this because he was threatening to mate me. He was threatening to mate me and this is drawn. This is a pretty funny draw. Uh, but okay, it's a great example to show you how important is to play active in the rook end games. You, you shouldn't care about the pawns, just care about the rook's activity. So that's the point and that's the trick. So a pretty funny way to make a draw and this is, this is the way. Okay, okay nice one and uh, the lecture should be in rook end games, care about two things. King's activity, which in this case wasn't that important. Second or seventh rank and the Rook's activity. Let's go.